Hello students, myself channel. Let us discuss permeability and seepage. Although there is a new chapter, but permeability somewhat we have discussed in previous videos. Permeability is nothing but ability to permit the water. In this picture, you can see that it is water and it is passing through the soil surface, right? So that is permeability. Let us understand some technicalities of this chapter. Permeability is defined as a property of soil which permits the flow of water through it. Unit for that permeability is written as centimeter per second or meter per day. It is nothing but the ability to permit. In gravels or we can say coarse grained soils, permeability is very high. In case of fine grained soils, in case of clay for an example, the permeability is very low due to uh, holes or gaps or voids in between coarse grained soils there is high permeability. Now let us understand factors which are affecting permeability of the soil. What is the driving force or what are the different factors which are affecting the uh, permit uh, ability to permit the water. Right. Let us see that. First, void ratio of soil. For a given soil, greater the void ratio, higher is the value of permeability. So, if the void ratio is greater, the permeability will be greater. It is understandable. Voids are greater or void ratios are greater, then permeability will be increasing. K is proportional to E cube upon 1 plus E or we can say K is proportional to E. Second factor which is affecting permeability is particle size. So, particle size permeability varies approximately as the square of the grain. So, we can write K is proportional to D10 square. So, that D10 that is particle size. K is equal to C into D10 square. Well, C will be a constant for permeability. Here, K, there is permeability measured in centimeter per second. C constant is generally taken from 100 to 150. It is generally taken 125 as a standard. D10, there is effective diameter as we all know in particle size analysis. Viscosity of fluid. We know that what is viscosity? Viscosity is nothing but the resistance to flow. So, whenever the fluid is having more resistance, its viscosity will be higher. Now, in case of permeability, permeability is inversely proportional to the viscosity of fluid. So, permeability increases, then viscosity should decrease. Or higher will be the viscosity, lower will be the permeability. Here, the diagram is showing high viscous as well as low viscous fluids. Here, you can see low viscous fluid is going in a straight uniform manner and highly viscous fluid is going in a triangular manner. What does it mean now? If the viscosity is higher, resistance is higher, liquid is not going in a uniform manner, it is going in a triangular manner. It is making space for itself, where in a low viscosity area, fluid is going faster than the high viscous fluid. So, this diagram is showing you like this and ultimately we can say that K1 by K2 permeability 1 by permeability 2 is proportional to eta 2 by eta 1 that is viscosity 2 by viscosity 1. So, viscosity is inversely proportional that is it. Let us move to the next item which is impurities in water. Any foreign matter in water has a tendency to plug the flow passage and reduce permeability of soils. So, it is quite obvious that any foreign matter or we can say disturbance will plug the flow passage, will resist the way of passage of water and it will reduce our permeability. So, uh, water should be more clearer so it will be not resisted. Adsorbed water. Now, 
adsorb water we do understand that soil particles are uh, covered with adsorbed water on its periphery right now it causes an obstruction to flow of water in the pores and reduces the permeability so it also causes the flow because it is stuck to the circumference of soil particles right and it will uh, ruin the flow degree of saturation so degree of saturation we all know that that is sr the presence of air in soils causes the blockage of passage and permeability hence is reduced so again uh, when degree of saturation is less then the air will be more right air will be more and air will resist the flow so k for fully saturated soil will be greater than k partially saturated soil because the air factor is working here next item that is shape of particles shapes now if we talk about shapes the permeability of soil depends upon the shape of particle which type of shapes let us see that permeability of rounded particle as we can see here is much more greater then semi rounded angular and flaky particles now if we talk about from bottom to top very less permeability will be there for flaky particle here you can see a flaky particle it will have least uh, permeability more than that angular particle will have more uh, more permeability then semi rounded particle will have more uh, permeability than that and rounded particle will have maximum permeability uh, around among all so these are the shapes and last factor which is going to matter that is structure of soil mass for the same void ratio the permeability is more in case of flocculated structure as compared to dispersed one so we know that flocculated structure is having gaps in between them and these gaps will allow water to permeate where dispersed structure was like this right so it would not allow the water to pass easily so permeability for flocculated structure will be greater let us move to some basic definitions here total head total head is made up of three things datum head pressure head and velocity head those three are written by this equation total head is denoted by capital h and datum head is denoted as small z pressure head p upon gamma w and velocity head that is v square upon 2g same way hydraulic head is denoted by small h it is equal to the difference in the elevation of water levels at entry and exit points in a soil mass in this figure we can see that there is a gap between entry and exit water levels it is also known as effective head here you can see entry is getting at h1 and then it is going to exit at height h2 and in which in between both of them there is a height difference z1 and z2 are showing that and h1 or h2 also showing there so gap between entry and exit that is h1 and h2 is showing hydraulic head and this line is known as hydraulic gradient line hydraulic gradient i small i shows hydraulic gradient the loss of head per unit length of flow the loss of head per unit length of flow is known as hydraulic gradient so i is equal to h by l h is hydraulic head or loss of head upon length moving further to fourth definition that is percolation or we can say seepage so the rain water after falling on the earth surface some part of that seeps through the soil and meet the ground water so when rain happens it will meet the ground water it will try to meet the ground water and this process is known as percolation the pressure exerted by water on soil 
through which it percolates is known as seepage pressure. Seepage pressure is formula can be written as hydraulic head into unit weight of water. Ps can be written as H into gamma W. And I is equal to H by L that we very well know. Here percolation pond is shown in the figure and the, here there is a water table or empty pond is shown. Here these water will going to go downwards and it will try to meet the underground or ground water table water. Now if we uh, use both of this formula we can write Ps is equal to I into L into gamma W because H is equal to I into L. Total seepage force, we have talked about seepage pressure, but if we talk about seepage force, then it will be Ps is equal to I into L into gamma W into A, where A is total cross sectional area. What is the importance of seepage pressure? So, seepage pressure will be useful to analyze stability of dams. If the dam is constructed before 20 years, if it is stable right now or not, how to check? The seepage pressure will be useful to check that. To design the hydraulic structures, even in the design itself of the dams, it will be useful as well as canals, etc. Phenomenon of quicksand. Now, what is quicksand? Let us understand in 2-3 minutes. Discharge velocity. Now, it is velocity for discharge. The discharge of water per unit of total cross-sectional area of soil is known as discharge velocity. V is written as Q by A. And another thing that may be confusing seepage velocity. Now, seepage velocity is what? The discharge of water per unit of cross-sectional area of voids perpendicular to the direction of flow is known as seepage velocity. Get the difference correctly. Here, Vs can be written as Q by AV. That is cross-sectional area of voids only. Vs can be also written as V by N. N is porosity here and formula for N, we very well know that E upon 1 plus E. True velocity can also be written as Vs is greater than V. Where Vs is seepage velocity and V is discharge velocity, right? So, discharge velocity is always lesser than the seepage velocity because of area of voids. Area of voids is always lesser than total area. That is quite obvious. And seepage velocity is also sometimes known as true velocity. Quicksand. It is a process. It is a condition. It is not a name of sand, right? When flow takes place in an upward direction, the seepage pressure also acts in an upward direction and the effective pressure is reduced. So, it will reduce the effective pressure and in such a case, a cohesion less soil loses all its shear strength and the soil particles have a tendency to move upwards in the direction of flow. This phenomena of lifting the soil particles upwards is known as quicksand condition. Or we can also term it as sand boiling condition or sand boiling. Here in this image you can see uh, this quicksand, these must have been seen in movies etc. entertainment videos. Moving further, hydraulic gradient I is equal to H by L. H by L also can be written as gamma submerged upon gamma unit weight of water, gamma W. Or we can also tell that gamma dash upon gamma w. Here, this situation is quicksand condition. Do listen carefully. Here, it is intake. Here, water is going inside. And it is outtake, outside flow. Here, when the water coming inside, it will fill the sand, uh, sand vessel or sand bowl or sand tank. And it will go downwards. After going on downwards, some of the water will go this way and it will try and move upwards. And then the condition, whichever the condition is created 
will be known as quick send condition or send boiling condition it will move the send will move towards upwards direction so that is lifting upwards that is send boiling quick send condition mainly occurs in fine sends generally it occurs in fine sends when ic is almost equal to 1 what is ic now i is hydraulic gradient and ic is critical hydraulic gradient when critical hydraulic gradient will be 1 then quick send will be there the hydraulic gradient at which the effective stress becomes zero is known as critical hydraulic gradient so formula for ic can also be written as same gamma dash upon gamma w but when it will happen then and then when effective stress will become zero and formula for ic can further be written from index properties and relationships we can write down g minus 1 upon 1 plus e into gamma w upon gamma w and gamma w can be cancelled out so ic will be g minus 1 upon 1 plus e moving forward to next item that is piping piping is a type of failure here you can see a dam this is upstream of the dam here the water is filled up to this level this inverted triangle is showing you the level of water and in the cases of dam what happens is piping failure happens and how let us see from this side where the water is filled the water will try to percolate through this way and it will come out from here when it will try to come out and succeed this dam wall will get, going to get uplifted and that is how piping failure happens when piping failure occurs always exit gradient is always greater than critical gradient so when the hydraulic gradient at the time of critical will uh, be lesser than the exit gradient then piping failure may happen hydraulic structures as weirs and dams built on pervious foundations sometimes fail by formation of a pipe and that is known as piping failure so that's it for this lecture we will understand more geotechnical engineering in next video thank you